All right. Everybody ready? Yep. Justin, you good? You, yeah, you go ahead. Okay. I'm going to get to it. <clears throat> there we go. And I'm gonna welcome. See, I'm a- oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? We're off to a great start. Oh my god. <laughs> what the f- that was totally unintentional. You, you weren't even looking. You were looking at your phone. I am such an asshole. I'm sorry. I literally got two syllables out. Dude, I totally <laughs> iced you, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> On this episode of the MacGuffin Guild. We're celebrating our 25th episode by letting our hair down, having a few drinks, and enjoying head, courtesy of the Monkees. This 1968 fantasy comedy musical stars Davy Jones, Peter Tork, Mickey Dolenz, and Michael Nesmith. It was written by Jack Nicholson and Bob Raffleson, who also directed We're going to let loose and talk about the history of the monkeys, real executions in G-rated movies, Frank Zappa's musical and physical body, and cherry ice cream. We'll discuss Jack Nicholson's 158 million viewings, the works of Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Justin's points. We'll also get into the contest that brought this film to the show, the winner, Ash, and our very first guest appearance, featuring Sarah. I'm Pat Doherty, and as always, I'll be joined by my fellow MacGuffins, Justin Jones and Mike Antonio. Our theme song was written and performed by Jordan Vincent. Join us as we are tossed into a psychedelic, surrealist, plotless, circular bit of fun fluff in the monkey's head. You better than this. And welcome to a very special episode of the MacGuffin Guild, our official 25th episode. I don't know why I felt I had to preface that with official, as if uh, any of our episodes are unofficial. Are you all right, Justin? <laughs> I think I think Justin just shattered a window or something. That was way louder than I thought it would be. <laughs> Would'd you think a window was gonna sound like it was shattered? <laughs> Justin's trying to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he just he busted just, out his window he and just left. Jumped it out the window. It's crazy. I wasn't on mute. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, a MacGuffin is a plot device used to drive along a story, and we here on the MacGuffin Guild like to use the film as a MacGuffin to drive along our conversations. And anyone who has been a, a Guild member from the beginning here, or even from you know recent history, if you've been a member of the Guild, then you know that we have recently held a contest for our listeners to pick the 25th episode. And, uh... We got a handful, actually more than a handful, two handfuls of selections that the three of us then had to choose from, and we ended up with a monkey's movie, which I did not see coming, I have to be honest. <laughs> no, yeah, no, not I at didn't. all. We, not I, at I picked all. it, and I was surprised that it won, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with me, as always, to my left, sort of. What, did you say who yourself is? Oh, I'm Pat Doherty. I don't know if I said that part. <laughs> I don't think you did. But to my virtual left is Justin Jones. Justin, how's it going? That's me. Um, you can edit in later during uh, editing uh, the round of applause, but that's me. That's all I got. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It'll have to be a very exciting round of applause. No, I know. This is going to be an exciting episode, man. Because I agree. we yeah. like honestly, full disclosure, we have been online talking for like three hours uh, yeah. before we even started, which um, a means that we're super excited about it. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, yeah. A lot about it. A lot of it was talking about like, you know, our friends that we um, long term friends, friends we made, made along the way, new friends. Um, what also means is that we're pretty pissed drunk at this point. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes, we've all been drinking because we're celebrating. Yeah, Mike's off work yet tomorrow because it w- someday in the last like three weeks was his birthday. I can't remember when. <laughs> That's not why he's off though. Is uh, it? What? No, I just took vacation this week. Yeah, because you're because it's your birthday, right? Yeah. Well, I usually take it the week of my birthday, but it's oh, I the didn't week know after. that there was any correlation. I just no, I usually do take you like, had the like week. some time. I don't know. Well, 
yeah, I have some vacation okay. time that I want. But Regardless, anyway. point is, we're letting it all hang out <laughs> tonight, man. We're doing a monkeys man. movie. We're all over the place uh, already. It's, insane. it's an insane movie. It's great. It's a uh, uh, a time to celebrate our friends. It's um, a contest. It's going to be great. And it's a time to celebrate the MacGuffin Guild and all the guild members who have come along on this adventure, on this ride with us. It's been really yeah. exciting. And we're going to give shout outs. And we have some uh, contractual obligations due to the contest that we have to follow. And yeah. it's going to be fun. And yeah, it's just it's a celebration. This is more than just another uh, movie episode. This is it's more than that. It's and we're going to be talking about people who died in the last couple of weeks. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not lying. Where to, I mean, yeah, but where to, where to bring it down a little bit? I mean, that segue, you do have to work on your segue game. Okay. Can we edit that? I'm still working on the segue thing. God damn it. I thought I nailed it this time. You can clean that up. So also with us is Mr. Mike Antonio. Mike, how's it going? Everything's good. Like, like we already mentioned, I'm on vacation, so I'm just kind of hanging out. Not being at work, so it's pretty nice. Good. Per- I can't even talk. Because, again, as we mentioned, we're all drinking right now, so... <laughs> <laughs> this, this might be a mess of an episode, but it's going to be fun. It'll be good. As I said, the film that we ended up... Well, normally I say the film that we chose or we picked, but this, right. this uh, episode, we did not. It was out of our hands. Sort of. So listener's choice. It was listener's choice. So what we had, I want to give some shout outs before we uh, get to the winner here. I'm going to give some shout outs to the other films that were selected and who selected them. Of the finalists that we uh, we had to choose from, we had The Bad Batch, which was selected by Shanna. We had Boondock Saints, which was selected by Zach. We had Antrim, which uh, what's the subtitle on that one? Uh, the Cursed Film or something? Uh, I can't remember exactly. Mm. All right. Well, maybe we should start a film podcast so we can <laughs> we can have that information. Uh, that was selected by Terry. We had uh, Predator Two selected by Eddie. We had A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night selected by Chuck. We had All Time Classic Transylvania Six Five Thousand selected right. by Chris. We had uh, Frailty selected by Will. Turbo Kid, selected by Sarah, and Waxwork, directed by Rob, and that was the 1988 version. D- directed by Rob? <laughs> is that what I said? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, why is he switching it I up believe to you meant to say written and produced by... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you meant to say catering by... <laughs> yeah. Catering. Oh, man. This is going to be a services long by... <laughs> Oh, yeah, craft services. Uh, selective, not directed by, by, by selected by. by fire. <laughs> All right, look, that was an honest mistake. Anyway, the final film that was, was chosen was The Monkey's Head, selected by Ash. So those are the films that we had to choose from. Now, the way that the rules were set up is of all the submissions that we got, which, those, uh, which I just read, of those submissions... The three of us each picked one film to make it to the finals. So I selected The Bad Batch, which Mm -hmm. was uh, Shanna's submission. Mike selected Waxwork, which was Rob's submission and his directorial debut. (laughs) (laughs) And Justin selected Head. So of those three films, the power then shifted back to the listening guild members who then chose which film we would feature in today's yeah, episode. We, we, you created a poll. And Head came out the winner. And there was no... Came out ahead. The films themselves are, like, surprising. The films are great, but even the, the, the range of people that submitted... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, it yeah. is great, and we appreciate it. it. Means it means the world to us. Oh, for absolutely! Sure. Oh, f- yeah. Oh, hell yeah! So here we are. So now, just before we proceed, I'm required to say that there were kind of two elements to this contest. One was your film would ultimately be selected by the people to be featured on this episode, but two, there was a prize package that came along with that. Yeah. So included within that prize pack is two things. One. A list of uh, DVDs and books and stuff, which uh, Mike will give us the details on momentarily. 
But the other side of that prize is the fact that we are now contractually obligated to mention the winner five times through the course of the episode. Correct. So, not counting now, it has not begun yet, but Ash will now be mentioned five times as we go. So, it'll be exciting to see when Ash comes up, because, again, this is not something that we have... Anyone who knows us knows that we don't really have this completely planned out, so... No, no, this is not scripted. We don't script this at all. But, um, this movie actually legitimately spoke to me, and, uh, I didn't actually think it would win. Like, I thought it would be kind of like a funny thing to throw in there. So the fact that we're actually going to be discussing it is very exciting to me. Um, yeah, but the people voted on it, so... Yeah, the people voted. Uh, all ten of them, so... <laughs> no, it was more no. than that. It was like 16 There's, or 17 yeah. total votes. Yeah, so, something like that. Hey, but we got to start somewhere. So, mm -hmm. you know, here we are. And I can't imagine anyone who would be less appreciative of the prize package that she won. Oh, yeah, so, Mike... <laughs> Uh, Mike, why Jesus don't you give us? Christ. <laughs> oh, you said less appreciation. <laughs> yeah, said less appreciation. <laughs> because my friend Ash is not a horror fan at all. Hmm. Like, so uh, I'm very curious to see. I'm, I'm gonna like every three to four weeks pressure her to see what you know how far she got into this prize package. Well, maybe we then can uh, guilt her into giving the prizes to someone. Else. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you would just like a gift certificate to Red Lobster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think she'll find very good ways of distributing them to people with good homes. Uh, so, Mike, why don't you tell us what is in the prize package that Ash will be receiving? Okay, the prize package, besides the five mentions in the episode, uh, the physical items are as follows. Two Blu-rays and two books. First, the movies. Uh, one is Tremors. The Arrow, nice deluxe edition release, and uh, I gotta say, from from for myself, I've seen it and it looks the best the movies ever looked. They really did a great job. I would love uh, a, to have a friend give that to me for my birthday, which is next month. <laughs> <laughs> I hope um, I hope Ash is listening. <laughs> To be fair, she's not listening, so that's, we could just do whatever. I, she doesn't even listen to this, I'm sure. She's like, I'm, I think she told me she does. I know she doesn't, though. So. <laughs> All right, so, Mike, what else do we have? All right, uh, so, well, and, and here's the thing, though. I, I wouldn't consider the Tremors a horror movie. What the fuck so, are you talking about? Just tell us what's in the prize It's pack. a period what? piece. You're saying she doesn't like horror. Oh, she doesn't like gotcha. horror. <laughs> So she might enjoy that at least. Mike is giving reviews of the film. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm just I'm going back to the fact that he says she doesn't like horror. I consider that more of a comedy. So he's three Jaeger bombs deep, and he's the only one that's making sense. Give him a break. <laughs> yeah, for real. All right. So anyway, proceed. so Tremors uh, and, and the other Blu-ray is the amazing George Romero film Creep Show. So that's the films, and then the two books are Lovecraft Country, which is the very uh, successful HBO show is based on this book, mm -hmm. uh, and the author of that was, uh, what was it? H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding. No, but it's very Lovecraftian, yeah, yeah. actually, if you couldn't tell from the name. Uh, and then the other book is a collection of short stories based on the uh, Clive Barker uh, Nightbreed, or Cabal, as it was originally called, uh, uh, it's, uh, shit, what the hell's the title of oh, it? Jesus Christ, Mike. Well, l let me ask you then. Uh, you said so, Nightbreed oh and Cabal, what other title is there? Well, the original, the original book is called Cabal, and then the film is Nightbreed. So, Mike, because you didn't say, uh, if you could just answer one final thing, are the books in high def? Yes. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, I got some honorable mentions. I got Oliver Varga, who picked Fantastic Planet, which I have not seen. And it's one that's been on my list for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I honestly, I wish he would have got in, you know, because yeah, yeah, I don't know it, him. It was a late submission. Yeah, it was so, late. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, it, we had already picked this and watched it. And it's, it's a shame because I probably would have picked his movie. Uh, cause uh, I just want to point out that uh, Oliver is hailing all the way from Australia. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And he sent us that a very cool. he sent us a very nice message and we re oh, yeah. we really appreciate it. It was very very yeah. nice of you to do that. And we appreciate you being a part of this. 
and a great pick, by the way, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, I would, I, I honestly probably would have picked that one. Yeah, um, but well, it came if, a little If you too hang late. around, Oliver, I guarantee you will hear that film eventually on the MacGuffin Guild. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we're definitely probably going to get to that. Mm-hmm. Definitely, probably. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? I don't know. <laughs> There's so many sounds. It's freaking right. me out. Justin, what else do you have so we can proceed to head? So, uh, continuing with the honorable mentions, um, the RWK podcast, Brian Fisher, I want to uh, give a shout out to him. He's been very active on our page. He hasn't suggested anything, but uh, um, he's been really fun to talk to, and I listen to his podcast. It's really good. Um, so he talks to a lot of um, regionally well-known uh, musicians around his area, which I believe uh, okay. is in the Midwest, Michigan Oh, okay. United States. Uh, I was going to ask, like, what what his podcast was about because I, yeah, ha- I I have not listened to it. Oh, it's cool. He has like a, he has a really cool like little Stephen vibe, where he's like very like has a very soothing kind of cool cool voice, and he like talks about a lot of music stuff. So you're if, if you're in like oh, music cool. and you're in like a local like uh, band and you want to kind of like hear some stories from other people, it's really good. Um, oh, that's cool. I'm almost completely caught up. I have like 20 minutes. I started with episode three. I went back to one, and I have like 20 minutes left of uh, episode two. Oh, I thought you were going to say you have 20 minutes left of your manifesto right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. No, you wish. I'm going to go on for about another hour and a half. Um, <laughs> Did this just become the Justin Jones podcast? Yeah. Why don't you shut the f*** up, man? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> And the last thing I want to say is Ash, who won our contest, who is actually a personal friend of mine, so I feel a little weird about it, but... I think she won a fair and square because this was a oh, fantastic yeah. movie. I enjoyed watching it. Um, I picked it for legitimate reasons, but I do want to give a shout out to her Instagram page, which is Mates of Fate. Um, so if you play role playing games or you're familiar with Dungeons Dragons or anything like that, they do a lot of uh, memes um, on the subject matter, which uh, I pretty much laugh out loud when I see them, but because I might be a little too close to them because it's stuff we experienced in our own campaigns. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, Mates of Fate, check it out. I think uh, contractually, that's two mentions you said of them. That's on. That's an Instagram page. That's you an said? Instagram page. Mates of Fate. Okay. Um, they're actually running a contest right now where you can win some nerd stuff. Ooh. She's gonna give away the prizes she just won. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can win uh, two DVDs and two books that she has no interest in watching or reading. So, any final uh, shout outs? Uh, or honorable mentions, or do we have some uh, some entertainment news that may be on this slightly sad side before we get to the Rotten Tomatoes for the uh, monkey's head? Well, I just I just saw right before we started recording that uh, famous uh, I don't know what you would... entrepreneur yeah yeah entrepreneur that makes sense uh, Larry Flint passed away mm-hmm. which I thought he was older I think it said he was like seventy eight. I felt that he was older than that, but... And, and uh, uh, Christopher Plummer. Yeah, Christopher pheno- Plummer. Phenomenal actor, which the, the most recent film I saw him in was Knives Out. Mm-hmm. Christopher Plummer has 217 acting credits. God damn. That's pretty impressive. Wow. His first of which was in... What does it say? 1953? I feel like it would be earlier than that. Dude, that's like 60... Well, he was born in ago. 29... Wow. So he was 20-something, 24, give or take. Hmm. Anyway, okay, so Rotten Tomatoes. The film we did today is Head, The Monkey's Head, and it was produced in 1968. Comedy, fantasy, musical, chaotic, artistic. Trippy. Trippy. November 20th, 1968, one hour, 26 minutes long, rated G. Or hmm. so it says, which uh, there's something very interesting about that that I want to come back to in a little bit, hmm. but we'll get to that. So obviously the main stars of this are the monkeys, and there's a bunch of cameos, interesting cameos that we will absolutely discuss as we go here. Yeah, and if you're not familiar with the monkeys, I mean, do yourself a favor and check out the show. Mm-hmm. I, oh, remember yeah. watching, I remember watching that as a kid. Of course, I'm sure so much of it went over my head because I was a kid. Or or watch the documentary. There's a documentary on YouTube. Does anybody know the name of that? I think it's called Hey Hey We're the Monkeys documentary. Yeah yeah yeah. That's, that's it. That's what it's called. Um, what I saw of it was like fascinating because I did not know a lot. Like it's 
kind of just going through their whole origin, how they all got started on the show and blah, blah, blah. And I knew nothing about the monkeys other than when I was a really young kid, I used to watch the show. So that that was my the extent of my knowledge of the monkeys. And I knew a few of their songs, obviously, but Rotten Tomatoes. Positives or negatives first, by the way. Uh, well, you got to we got to guess the okay, uh, percentages. Fine. fine. <laughs> <laughs> get with the get with the format, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Richter. I already know the critic one, so I'm not going to guess because I accidentally saw it, Just, much like Justin did once. But you didn't you didn't see audience though. No, I did okay. not. So Justin, would you care to guess uh, what you believe the critic review for? The monkey's head on Rotten Tomatoes is. 68. Very close. 75%. Oh. Audience score, what do you guys think? Higher or lower oh. than the 75 critic? I'm going to say 63%. 63. Justin, what do you think? I'll go uh, around 60. Nah, 71. Wow. So it's, well, it is lower, but... Yeah, but still over 70 not as low as we went, right? So, Ranger reviews here. I'll start with some positives. Kim Newman from Empire Magazine says, Mad, but highly watchable. He gave it a four out of five. Mad as in crazy. Yeah. He liked the British. Mm -hmm. You're mad. Mm -hmm. Derek Adams from Time Out says, Despite obvious dated aspects like clumsy psychedelic effects and some turgid slapstick sequences... The film is still remarkably vital and entertaining. So that's Derek. David Cornelius from Popcorn World says, this apparently starts mid-review because it just starts with, in which the monkeys get stoned, commit career suicide, and end up accidentally making one of the best movies of the 1960s. Whew. So... Well, that's interesting, too, because they say about the monkeys committing career suicide. I don't think that they had a lot to do with the actual um, trajectory of their career. Tra yeah, exactly. Or, or like uh, the results of what this film, you know, happened. I think mm -hmm. there was uh, outside factors that were more mm -hmm. um, at, at play. Yeah. Fernando F. Croce from Cine Passion says, if the Beatles were housebroken Marx Brothers, the monkeys are gutty Bowery boys. Okay. Somebody's going to have to translate that one for me. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 a, that's a Dennis Miller mm -hmm. exactly. kind of humor yeah. there. Renata Adler from the New York Times says, the movie is nonetheless of a certain fascination in its joining of two styles, pot and advertising. Okay, I'm going to do another one. These are lame. Yeah, these they are, are lame. Um, these yeah. are awful. J.R. Jones says... Uh, for, he's, uh, <laughs> no relation. Yeah, no relation. <laughs> J.R. Jones from the Chicago Reader. It's uneven, but mostly a blast. Sean Axemaker from Parallax View, we've had him before, says, A surreal mix of psychedelia and satire, a loopy twist of their lighthearted TV show with a dark undercurrent squeezed in between genre parodies. Yeah, I mean, that's... Pretty accurate. It, it actually is like spot on. That was on. probably one of the better reviews that I've read here. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. That's someone who gets it. Yeah. yeah. Phil Hall from Film Snobbery. An entertaining mess. So. Yeah. I, I, I can relate to that. Not wrong. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll give some negatives here. Variety staff from Variety, obviously, says the clean cut kids and the created kinetics work up a so what reaction too soon in the 85 minute stretch from war to westerns to desert chases to mad scientist brushes in the Columbia lot. I guess they're just saying there's just a lot going on and it's yeah, I, kind of I, I honestly I, I wouldn't even know how to write this like it's or like. Like, if you had to do a review, I don't even know where I'd begin. Mm. You know what no, I mean? It, it's so, like, indescribable almost. Yeah. I, I call this I call this Monty Python and now for something completely different yeah. on, like, speed. <laughs> yeah. Speed mixed with a little bit of uh, hallucinogenic uh, uh, shrooms well, or something. Speaking of Monty Python, Dennis Schwartz from Dennis Schwartz Movie Reviews says it's no Monty Python. And it's not. I, I I'm with him on that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's no Monty Python, but it's also no Beatles, but it's somewhere in between. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, it is. It no, is. Yeah, I don't that, agree that is with very that. True. Because are you saying 
Okay, well, th you have to describe your scale that you're on here. You're saying the Beatles musically and the Monty Python comedically, and they're somewhere yeah. floating in the middle? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's how I feel. That's, I, I'd, 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 I'd agree with that. Mm. So Eric Lorio from Greenwich Village Gazette says, The great movie suicide attempt. The monkeys succeed God. in killing their careers. God damn. Um, I partially agree with that, but I everyone blames it on the monkey. The monkeys didn't write, produce, or like push this movie. They were no, just Jack like Nicholson the actors. Did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, the, I think that's like half right, and in the fact that it was like a suicide attempt, but it was more like a Jack Kevorkian like assisted suicide well, attempt. Well, and did you know that? Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but one thing I read was uh, three of the four of them on the first day of filming walked off a set in a protest. Yeah. Because they, they weren't happy. Hmm. Yeah. And then the, the producers offered them a bigger cut of the... the, the uh, Box office. Yeah. They gave them more money. Yeah. Peter Tork was the only one to show up on the first day. Was it Peter that showed up and the yeah. rest of them were like, fuck that, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were already were not happy with this yeah. movie. So one, uh, one final review and then we'll move on. Uh, James Kendrick from Q Network Film Desk. There is an inherent curiosity quotient for any project this inherently whacked out, which helps smooth over the underlying rub that Raffleson is using the film to rather pretentiously blow his own horn. Wow. <laughs> yeah, man. You get all that? I, I, I do think, like, uh, just going back and, and starting to watch that documentary and them showing, like, bits from the show... Mm -hmm. I was laughing hard at that stuff. At oh, yeah. However, watching the movie, now there were things I chuckled at in, in the movie, like things I definitely appreciated. There were moments here and there. But I think for me, the show was much more lighthearted and fun. Mm -hmm. I and, and, you know, that's again, that's not the monkeys. They didn't write it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not to say that I disliked the movie. It was a it was a very different feel from the show. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't know if that's. I, I'm kind of conflicted of whether I feel that's a good or a bad thing. Like, I don't really... I, I think don't know. The, sh the show was very lighthearted and uh, and everything, and it was fun. And then, yeah, the monkey's head was... I liked it, so I'll just uh, jump ahead and say I liked it, I, and I enjoyed I watching it. I also did, too. Um, but it was, it was weird. It was much weirder than the monkey's show. Um, yes. It was not sequitur. It was dark. Kind of made no sense. Which I liked. And uh, there's so many aspects because, like, it was so different than what they did, like, previously. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like an allegory of them trying to, like, break out of the mold that they were constantly mm -hmm. stuck in. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the people who wrote that were kind of, I felt like, sticking them in that box. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there was, like, a weird, like, them trying to break out of the box, which is, you know... In the film, repeatedly, them trying to break out of the box. Yes, like literally. It doesn't matter how many times they try to break out of the box, they still get keep getting put in the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which was very, like, real to their career, which maybe people yeah, didn't yeah, see, yeah. you know what I mean? Because they were constantly, like... Exactly. Like, two of the guys were legitimate musicians, two of them were actors. Yeah. And then the actors had to learn how to play instruments. Um, the musicians and had to learn how to act. Right. And so you're put into a situation where, like, you have to step outside your comfort zone. You have to do these things you're not used to. You have to make it successful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's, like, one of my favorite things about this movie is the music is fantastic, which is all their music. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I totally agree with that. Some of those songs, I was like, genuinely, like, this is a good song. Yeah. And the monkeys were giving shit for, like, oh, you're not a real band and you don't play mm -hmm. your own mm -hmm. instruments and stuff like that. And they were, like, in my opinion, doing better pop music than we've heard in the last, like, it's some of the best pop music in the last I hundred totally years. I totally agree yeah. with you. Yeah, and and what like and uh, and to play off that, sorry, Justin, real quick. But, no, no, uh, go ahead. Growing up, you know, seeing the show, like I, I was a kid when I saw the show, but I I liked mm -hmm. it. And again, it probably mostly went over my head, but I just thought they were silly and funny. But I always thought that they were a fake band. Like I didn't know that they were a legit mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Until much later, I was like, oh, they actually really did make music and made albums and stuff. Oh, yeah. They were manufactured. 
you know, yes. someone brought yeah. them together. But yeah. like the ones who didn't play music had to learn to play music. They had to you learn, know what I mean? Yeah. And they and they, be, and they became musicians. Like so, that's for amazing instance, to me. Yeah. Mickey Dolans. Yeah, he had to learn how to play drums. He yeah. was an actor. He was and a child anyone, actor. Yeah, and anyone anyone who plays music knows how hard it is to play music and sing. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is an actor who had to learn how to play drums and sing. And yeah. at the time, how many how many uh, acts did you know that like? The drummer was the singer. The, the you know drummer what I mean? sings, yeah. They all sang, like much like oh yeah, very much like well, the Beatles. So who were the? You, know, you were... said two were actors and two were musicians. Well, what's the breakdown on that? Well, Mickey Dolenz was an actor for sure. Yeah, yeah, because he was in uh, Circus Boy when he was ten. Davy Jones was the other actor who actually was an apprentice jockey who then that didn't work out because he became uh, uh, an actor. Well, he was going to be trained to be a jockey, and like just as he was about to go away to do that, he got a stage role or something so he took that instead so instead of being a jockey he became when you an say actor. jockey you mean riding a horse or on the, the radio yeah, horse, horse jockey <laughs> yeah okay. horse no, jockey. Uh, uh, yeah a horse jockey not this he's jockey. small he's a small guy yeah and he's the only british one of the group mm -hmm. too and uh also uh two of them are dead yeah. now and two are still alive mm -hmm. yeah it's at uh davy jones and um shit. it's peter torque Peter Tork, yes. Yeah, he died of, of cancer. Them. Okay. Uh, but David Jones died first in, like, 2012. Yeah, had a heart attack. And then Tork died in, like, 2019, so fairly recently. Yeah. Well, uh, February 21st, which... Uh, uh, okay, so just about two years. So rest in peace, Tor uh, Peter Tork. Yes. You were pretty amazing. And David Jones. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, and David Jones, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Mickey Dolenz and Michael Nesmith. Mm-hmm. They're both still alive, yeah. And uh, Mickey Dolenz's daughter is Amy Dolenz, actress. Yeah. She was she was in the uh, horror movie Ticks. Okay. I always remember her in yeah. that with uh, Alf Alfonso Ribeiro and uh, mm -hmm. and I think Clint Howard's in that too. Oh, of course he is. Of course, the he legendary is. Clint Howard. Yeah. So, uh, the, but Mickey Dolenz, you know who modern day reminds me of him? Always reminded me of Ringo him. Starr. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, the actor, it's going to seem kind of probably goofy, but the actor Michael Rooker always really? reminded uh, me of Mickey Dolenz. Looks why I can see it in the face. Kind I of. can kind of see yeah. that. I yeah. can see I, it. I wouldn't have thought that at all. Mm -mm. Yeah, but when... Uh, Not when until Japan. Japan. Japano? Don't use my full name. Just use Pat. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of that until Pat pointed it out, but now that you said it, yeah, I can definitely yeah, see that. Yeah, because I was familiar with Mickey Dolenz before I was Michael Rooker, and then when I finally started seeing Michael Rooker hit the, hit the scene, like a Days of Thunder or whenever, whenever I saw him first, yeah. I was like, oh shit, kind of looks Henry like Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer? So, yeah, so yeah. Same, killer. same guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, when I was a kid, I hated Mickey Dolenz. Did you? Like, Did you? Oh, I don't why, know why. why. His face reminded Just, me of a kid in school. That was like the fucking shittiest kid. And really? like, I just, yeah. And, but now as an adult watching it, I'm like, oh, that was awful. Cause he's, he's great. Like, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And actually in the documentary, they mentioned something about it. Like his voice, like being an actor first, when he had to sing songs, he brought a level of um, acting and theater to his voice. Like oh, okay. his, his yeah, yeah, vocal yeah. His, modulations his, like his, and such. Like his voice training yeah. through acting. So you got something that was a little different. That was a little more thematic maybe. or Unlike uh, us theatric. Who, who have no uh, voice training. We no. all sound like garbage man. Yeah, we all sound like a bunch of buttholes that all know <laughs> what they're doing. Garbage you can't pronounce people's names. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Although we're doing pretty good this episode. We yeah, are. Yeah, because we're all shit-faced. We think we're doing good, but we're going to listen to this, and Pat's going to be like, two days from now, Pat's going to be like, nothing we recorded is useful. We're going to have to scrap yeah, that. Yeah, so speaking of uh, name pronunciations, this was written by and directed by Bob Raffleson. Mm -hmm. Is that how you pronounce that? Sure. And, Ra Raffleson? And, Raffleson? Yeah, see, I'm not sure. See, I, I and uh, also written by the legendary Jack Nicholson. Which I was like, my brain exploded when I was like, Jack Nicholson was involved in the writing of this? Like, mm -hmm. how did that happen? Does anyone know how that happened? I kind of think that you're thinking of, like, when you think, when you hear Jack Nicholson nowadays, like, especially people our, our age, we know who Jack Nicholson is. We well, know yeah, what he's at done. At the time, he wasn't a name, sure. 
But in 1968, yeah, like, who was he? You know what I mean? Well, let's uh, see. What was he doing back in 1968? Let's but this is, that. like, this is right before, um... One um, Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? No. He did well, Little yeah. Shop of Horrors in 60. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Roger Corman production. Let's see. TV, TV, The Broken Land, The Raven in 63. Easy Rider. Easy Rider, yes. Easy Rider. Ride in the that. Whirlwind. Hell's Angels on Wheels. Yeah, Easy Rider was 69, so right after. So that was yeah. after. Head. Yeah, because he was, I think, Sarah had, was saying a bunch of stuff about, like, a situation where Jack Nicholson was there, able to, like, experiment on film, mm. but it was kind of, like, maybe at the cost of the, because the monkeys at this point were kind of, like, fading in popularity, and it, mm. and this was kind of, like, one of the final nails in the coffin, I think, because I don't think it was, like, successful at all, although I love the movie, and I think the music in this movie is some of the finest, like, monkeys music oh yeah and i agree with that and yeah. it seems like a, it seems like a lot of other people do agree with that like they yeah. actually even if they don't necessarily like the movie they still say the music is some of the best yeah. that they've ever done i love the movie but i love the music in the movie even more like yeah. i think and then the music is amazing uh, yeah they did a test screening and originally this film was 110 minutes okay. and the test screening was a disaster and they made them cut the movie down or mm. them whoever not the monkeys themselves, but the, the filmmakers yeah. cut the movie down to what's it like eighty six minutes. Mm -hmm. So they cut quite a bit out. So co writer Jack Nicholson actually compiled the movie soundtrack in its final form with snippets mm. of the movie dialogue between songs and is so credited on the album cover. When mm. he saw Michael Nesmith at work in the studio and asked if he could help, Nesmith let him take over because, quote, I just want to go home. Oh, yeah. Nicholson wow. had unwavering enthusiasm for the movie, joining uh. in a stickering campaign to promote the premiere and declaring later that, quote, I saw it like 158 million times, man. I loved it. Wow. So. What kind of drugs was he on? I don't know. <laughs> I like this movie. I like. I would watch it 150 million times. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I could watch it that many times. Nope. I did enjoy it. Not for me. Yeah. No. I could. I couldn't watch it that many times. Um. I kind of actually, honestly, feel like w going into this, I would be the only. I felt like I was going to be a man standing on a mountain trying to defend myself because I was like, I, I thought that you two would both hate this, and no, I was going to have to try and defend it. my defend my position. Yeah, I on didn't it. hate it. Because I, I think the reason I didn't hate it was because I have so much respect for the monkeys and I was raised on them. Like, um, yeah, same. You know, they were always on TV growing up. Yep. So, yep. you know, it's kind of ingrained in there. But so I think that's why I didn't hate it. If I didn't know who the monkeys were and I had no experience with the monkeys and I watched this, I'd probably feel a little differently about it in a negative I, way. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And honestly, I. <laughs> I enjoyed watching it, but even after Sarah and I watched it, we're kind of like, ah, I feel like I need to watch it again. Like, it mm -hmm. didn't kind of click. But what this did do was kind of, like, revitalize this, like, monkey mania in me. Yeah, and you're like, I, I, I want to watch the show. I yeah. really want to watch the we show. We started watching the shows and documentaries and stuff right after. I'm like, man, the monkeys were fucking awesome. I they love were. their music. Because, yep. like, they got a lot of shit. Like, the monkeys got a lot of shit for being, like, a... a, a a pre because I used to call I think they were dubbed a prefab for mm -hmm. where they were like manufactured yeah but yeah. like which I don't think is fair because like they were a comedy act like I think a lot of people judge them as a rock band mm -hmm. um like oh they're a rock band that's not as good as the Beatles it was like whatever it's like no they're a comedy act that got to the level of being compared to rock bands you know mm -hmm. what I mean like yeah. they were a comedy act first and the fact that they were so good at doing what they were doing and playing music so well mm -hmm. that, that they, they were became a band yeah they like were they were band. they were kind of thrust into this band circle it's four fucking dudes who had a tv show that had to be actors and then on top of that be musicians afterwards selling fucking like records mm -hmm. like it's and they insane were successful to me. Yeah. they were yeah. su successful at both yeah, exactly, which is crazy to me. Like it, it is. Yeah. Like they were hilarious. Like we were watching clips from them and yeah. like like we were laughing out loud. Like they were hilarious. I was laughing hysterically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, real quick though, before we proceed, I think we have to uh we're contractually obligated to mention Ash, the winner of the 25th episode. 
So a round of applause for Ash, everybody, please. Let me hear you. <laughs> All right, so I read that the rumors abound are that the title was chosen in case a sequel was made. The advertisements would supposedly read from the people who gave you head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard that too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I mean, but that's a damn shame. You're going to... Rated PG. Yeah, rated PG. Oh, so can we talk about the rated G thing? Yeah, because you said you had something to point out about that. I have that. something that's pretty freaking major. So, again, maybe you guys can explain to me when the rating system really started to become what we know it as, but when you see that this film from, what, 1968 is rated G... When did we get the more standard G, PG, PG thirteen, R, X, or well, NC seventeen? Well, I, th I know PG thirteen didn't come around till like early to mid eighties. Yeah. So when would so like, it jumped from PG to R? So when did PG and R come to be? Ah, that I don't I don't know the history of those because this is what I find really unusual and thought provoking is this film, which is rated G. Towards the beginning of the film, they do this effect where a bunch of visuals go up on multiple TVs. I'm sure you guys can envision that. There's that scene towards the beginning where it's like, yeah, yeah, know, like uh, 30 they're, they're, TVs. And they're, and they're singing the, the song. They're singing yeah. like a "Hey, hey, we're the monkeys," but they're yep. talking about being manufactured and blah blah blah. Correct. So right at the end, the tail end of that effect with all these screens up. Did you guys catch what visual they showed? Oh yeah, yeah, the execution. That famous. Uh, yeah. The famous execution in Vietnam. Yeah, so... Where the guy gets and, shot in the head. It's and then horrible. later on, they show that same execution again. Yeah, they do. Later they, in the film. They cut away. They don't show... Yeah, the well, shot. yeah, they showed it They showed it the first, the first time. time. The first time, but it's like really small. It's Have you small ever... Screens. I would love for you guys or the listeners to tell me if there has ever been another rated G movie that shows an actual human execution <laughs> transformers i don't movie. know that <laughs> was that rated g no that was rated pg, PG oh. i think transformers the movie wasn't even because, g because because they say holy shit oh yeah <laughs> so listen so because of that i looked also in, drugs i looked into the assassination the execution i should say i looked oh, yeah, yeah, into yeah. it do you it's, what what history do you guys know about that? Zero. Well, I just know it's, like, super famous. I mean, Do you it's, know it's... why it's famous? No. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to school you on why yeah, that me. is famous. I mean, so, I've seen it a million times. So the executioner is a man named Guen Lone. Okay. He was the national police chief of South Vietnam. Okay. Okay. Now, this was during the Vietnam War in 1968. February 1st, 1968 is when this execution happened. He executed Nguyen Van Lem, who was a Viet Cong fighter. So what ended up happening was there was a very uh, iconic photograph taken of that execution, which I'm sure all of us have seen over the years. Yeah. And that photograph was taken by a man named Eddie Adams. And that photo went on to win a Pulitzer Prize, and it was voted top 100 most influential pics ever taken, uh, according to Time. That photograph, when it came out a day or two after it actually happened back in 1968, it shifted the views of American population and how we thought of the Vietnam War. And the reason for that, if you think about what I just said, the man who executed the other man was from South Vietnam our ally yeah. and he mm. killed a North Vietnamese soldier handcuffed handcuffed so when people saw that that would be like one of our allies today it would be like if we had I don't know I mean I'm horrible with politics but it would be like if uh, someone from Germany assassinated someone you know from one of our you know from Russia <laughs> It would be yeah. like, why is our allies, we're supposed to be the good guys. Why did he just shoot him in cold blood? Um, so because of that, it shifted our focus on the Vietnam War. And I think support, quote unquote, for the war shifted a lot 
Okay. Whereas before, I think we were pro America. Yeah, let's go get them, boys. But I think after that, it was like, oh, okay, shit got a little real here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but what I thought so was, it was a turning point. It was a turn. It was an absolute turning point to the point where they still say that that photograph and what and the repercussions of that photograph. Now, not even the footage that you see in the 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 film, but the photograph is what made the rounds, and yeah. that that shifted. The direction of American politics and history so that oh. still today is is looked at as one of the most influential photographs ever taken general loan you will be well maybe interested to know the man who did the execution mm -hmm. ended up moving to America years later oh wow where he lived in Virginia and owned a pizza parlor wow until he died like 20 years later of um I don't know if he died of cancer, I believe, but he died like he lived in America. And there was a period where I don't know what group someone was trying to get his green card revoked to get him out of here to because of his of history. But it yeah. didn't happen. And he lived here until his death. Wow. Isn't that wild? That is wild. That's interesting. Yeah. I had no idea. And you know why I learned that? Because of the fucking monkeys. Because of the fucking monkeys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never knew the full context. Like, I've seen that photo and I've seen the footage a million times through the years, mm -hmm. but I never knew the, the full context of it. So let me read one more thing and then we can move on. So this is according, uh, this is verbatim from the New York Times. A police chief fired a bullet point blank into the head of a handcuffed man in likely violation of the Geneva Conventions. Yeah. The official was not communist but a member of south vietnam's government the ally of the united states huh. so that was what was so shocking and shifted the the a lot of people's views on the war is to see the quote-unquote good guys doing that yeah. i think woke a lot of people up to what exactly sure. was capable however i will say and it would be unfair for me to continue this trend eddie adams the f photographer who took that the the iconic photo he was upset in hindsight because he said a picture doesn't always include context. Sure. And he was a little upset that his photograph became as iconic and uh, history shifting as it did because he said the photo doesn't tell the whole story. And what he revealed was that the man who was executed, not that this makes it any better, but still it makes it a little easier to swallow when you know the context. The man who was executed apparently according to uh eddie adams the photographer had killed the family of one of the sergeants of the south vietnamese army hmm. and he was arrested for that reason and i guess for whatever reason uh they decided to just handle it that way that doesn't make it right it doesn't make it right but i guess eddie adams was just context. always upset that that context wasn't there yeah no it, I can the see picture didn't sure. tell the full story Anyway, back to rated G movies. I have a question for you guys. I want to know how awkward that must have been for all of the monkeys in the opening to uh, to literally spread their herpes around the room. With Jack Nicholson's girlfriend. Oh, oh was she? Is that who that was? Like, a as they were filming it, yeah. they were dating. Mm-hmm. Huh. So let's talk about some of the cameos that were in this film. Uh, yeah, yeah, Frank Zappa. So how many of yeah, those Frank did Zappa. you? How many of those did you catch? I mean, obviously, we all saw the Zappa one. Yeah, Tor Johnson. Uh, oh, uh, Terry Gar. Tor oh, Johnson. Terry, yeah. Gar, Terry Gar. Yeah. Terry Gar. I caught that one. Uh, the Terry Johnson, Gar. Which one was she? The Western. Remember, she was the one that uh, she got bit on the finger or something. She's like, suck the poison out. Mm. And then the other guy got shot with an arrow, and he's like, do me a favor, break the break the head of the arrow off and then pull the shaft out of my chest and she was sitting there and then she pretended to um like like she was dying or whatever and he walks over and he like kicks her mm -hmm. and he's like wake up you're not dead or whatever yeah that's terry gar which i always thought I, it's always nice seeing her because um i remember my dad used to say that uh my mom reminded him of terry gar oh yeah that's cool oh huh so and then uh tour he was um uh, He's he a giant monster, bald-headed man. Yeah, yeah, but he was a security guard, right? Yeah, yep. Sir Doran, one of those final... Um, His last film credit, by the way. Is it? I was going to say, he he's famous from... Um, Plan 9 from uh, Outer Space. Plan 9 from Outer Space, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was a professional wrestler, correct? Uh, Turned actor? I don't think so. I, I know uh, George, no. I George the Animal Steel played yeah, uh, I think Tor that's Johnson. Yeah, I you're thinking of. Yeah, that, I think I might be where you're confused. 
So Tor, uh, George the Animal Steel played Tor Johnson's part in uh, um, Ed Wood. Ed Wood, yeah. And George the Animal Steel and was they a look professional wrestler. I, yeah. they, I'm right. I'm right. Jeez. <laughs> Car- <laughs> Carl Eric Tor Johansson. Mike was never great in debate class. <laughs> better known by the stage name Tor Johnson, was a Swedish professional wrestler and actor. All right, well, fuck me then. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. I was right. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> Justin wasn't wrong either in that Georgie Animal Steel played him and he no, was no, also no. Yeah, a he's correct, but I always I I was always under the thought. I was I w- I had always thought that Tor Johnson was a wrestler. I mean, but let's be honest, all of us uh you know kind of we're like, wrestlers at one a, point. <laughs> we're all wrestlers at heart. <laughs> We're all the uh, heavyweight champions in our own story. Yeah. So, Sonny Liston, another cameo. Yes. Wh- who's the, that? The boxer. Uh, who did he... Oh. The, he was oh, a boxer, oh. motherfucker. He punches out Davy Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who he is. He was a knew. boxer in real life and also no, was a boxer now. in this movie. And I, that, I, I like how he... Uh, Davy Jones picks him. Yeah. There's like a lineup of boxers. He's like, I like his smile. Yeah. He's not smiling at all. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Ray Nitsky... He also had a cameo in this. Tell and he us was who a, he is. He was a uh, legendary Green Bay Packer. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hall of Fame okay. class 1978. Apparently, I who think... Did, who did he play in the film? Uh, I think he was the football player in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, the guy that's in the trenches. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's and him. he keeps tackling... Um, was it Mickey Dolenz? Um, but yeah, so he was in it. Now, this one gets a little wacky. Apparently, uh, Ronald Reagan was also credited with a cameo. What? Or was it like in video, video yeah, footage it was like or something? Yeah, an archival ca- cameo. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, Dennis Hopper. Yeah, yeah, yeah I missed yeah, him yeah. in it. I saw that he was in it, but I missed him. Who? Where? When was he in the film? I don't know. You didn't see him either, <laughs> Justin? No. Maybe the listeners can tell us. Yeah, if you know at home, hit us up on social media and let us know in the comments. All right, so now tell me what kind of uh, plan you think this is. I don't care what movie you're producing. For fear a monkey's movie would keep serious movie critics and moviegoers away, the producers decided on a promotional campaign that emphasized the film had nothing to do with the monkeys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. This film had no opening credits, which was extremely rare for a 1960s film. Yeah. It made a meager $16,111 in ticket sales. Oh, my God. What was the budget? Did you ever? Uh, I didn't did you find say, that out? but I can find that out right now. Thank you that for asking. That sucks. Yeah, but I can see why audiences at the time wouldn't respond to it because it was so yeah. very different from the show. Budget estimated seven hundred and fifty thousand eh. dollars. I mean, it still lost a lot of money, but it was low budget. Yeah, it made sixteen thousand one hundred and eleven dollars. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's uh, uh that's disappointing. But again, I can see why general audiences would not like it. And again, as we mentioned earlier, it seemed like the monkeys themselves weren't very enthusiastic about doing the film until they got offered more money. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now would be a perfect time to mention our 25th episode film selection winner, Ash. Ash, it has been a pleasure to mention you multiple times so far in this episode, and I look forward to the next time that we contractually meet that obligation by mentioning you again. Thank you for being a part of the MacGuffin Guild. Nah. Uh, this film is part of the Criterion Collection, spine number 544. Yep, I saw that. Wow. Frank Zappa previously appeared in a filler segment of The Monkeys, Monkeys Blow Their Minds, 1968, where he and Michael Nesmith exchanged clothes and identities. Uh, can I ask you guys a question about Frank Zappa? Yeah. Uh, do you guys have experience with the music of Frank oh, Zappa? I, lo- I love Frank Zappa. So let me ask you, Justin, your opinion of Frank Zappa. So anybody who knows me well knows that I'm very much into Primus, Les Claypool, Quirky, The Residents, Tom Waits, you know, just like more off the beaten path kind of music, Skeleton mm-hmm. Key, look them up. But I, I love that kind of stuff. Now, Frank Zappa kind of fits in that, um, he's kind of in that 
field, in that genre. He's a little out there. He's out there. So it got me thinking about Zappa and my relationship with him and how, as I was young, I would explore him and uh, not physically, but more of a, <laughs> an, uh, <laughs> in an audio sort of way. <laughs> um, I mean, I would explore his his musical body, not his <laughs> physical body. And uh, equally essential. Anyway, <laughs> so it got me thinking what what it was about Zappa that it didn't continue to draw me in. I just mm. kind of grew away from him. So my question to you, Justin, is uh, you are a fan of Zappa, correct? Yeah, yeah, I love Frank Zappa. Okay, so my question to you is what is it about Zappa that you think is so special and makes him who he is? Is it just his quirky nature or is he a musician where he kind of backs it up? Um, what are your thoughts on him in, in general? I think that his quirky attitude also comes out in his music, which is like quirky and unique. And um, I don't know. It's just like, for instance, like one of my favorite songs is Peaches and Rangalia, uh, the first song on Hot, Hot Rats. And uh, sometimes when I'm just in a bad mood or having a bad day or something, when I put that on, it's just like just the the the, the nature of it and the, the musicianship, like every one of the instruments is awesome. And there's a lot of like interesting things to listen to. And it really draws your attention into it. And you, you have to like it's not just something on the background, something you have to actively listen to, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. which really kind of just takes you away, and it's kind of like almost like a, a Zen thing sometimes when you listen to it. I'm not like as familiar with Zappa as you guys are. Like, I, I obviously know who he is. I've heard a little bit of his music here and there, but I'm not like. There's a ton of his music that I've never explored, as Pat mm -hmm. put it. I didn't explore his musical body. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your loss, motherfucker. Well, maybe I will. I still, I'm still young, baby. I still got some vitality in me. Some exploring yeah. to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's interesting listening to you guys talk about it because I, I don't, I feel like I don't know enough about him, and now I want to dig into that. I want to, I want to well, listen to some of his music and see if there's anything that that resonates with me justin my question is is he a good musician in your knowledge as a guitar player is he a good musician? i think so he's he's an awesome guitar player for one he plays an sg mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool too um yeah i don't I, like he he shreds but he's not like a shredder per se you know what i mean mm -hmm. um and he like has uh, I feel like he holds the people in his band to a higher standard. Like I think it, there was something like he he like while they perform, like no one was supposed like to do drugs or drink or anything, anything uh, like yeah, that. Or, yeah. And it was all about mm -hmm. like um, you know performance first. Like I think like even James Brown, I think was kind of very similar with like wanting the performance, like the best performance, where he would like poke his. I don't know how true this is, but he used to, like mm -hmm. poke his other members in the band if they like missed a note or something like that and i think it was just that mm -hmm. cool. sense of um you know just getting creative people around him too to enhance his own creativity cool. yeah i feel like i didn't answer your question <laughs> no no it didn't but i i don't think it's it's it, yeah it's nothing that's your fault i think it's just been this zappa conundrum of mine for years where I always felt like he would be in my wheelhouse, and for one reason or another, it just never clicked. Yeah. And I'm just trying to figure out, yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, I know that's why there's a you know, thousand different types of ice cream. Like, you know, you're not going to like every one. Is there really a I thousand? I, well, I, if you talk to Ben and Cherry, I'm sure. Uh, let's count them. Let's, let's name them off. Ready? We're starting Vanilla. now, yeah. Cherry. Chocolate. <laughs> Strawberry. Do you start with cherry? <laughs> yeah, I started vanilla and chocolate. And you're just, you just jump right in with cherry. Well, I was thinking pistachio. I don't know why I said cherry. <laughs> oh, you know, the the standard ice cream, cherry. Everybody knows that. That's the go-to. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the way the saying goes, that's why they make two types of ice cream, chocolate and cherry. <laughs> Strawberry. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll give him another shot uh, one of these days. Put him in again and see if it clicks. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I guess that's an, an exploration for another day. I, I mean, sometimes you have to explore someone's musical body more than once because sometimes the first time <laughs> just isn't you know what you're expecting. Yeah. No, it's not. And you, then you know, once you get around to the second and third time, you're a little more comfortable, more relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, this is now getting creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just using your body, your your musical body exploration <laughs> metaphor. Damn it! I'm expanding upon it and making it weird and gross. Especially use it for good, not evil. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, I have recently mentioned Primus, so I'm just reading this on IMDb. In an interview published by Rolling Stone, Sean Lennon, who is the son of John Lennon, and Les Claypool, lead singer of Primus cited Head as a major influence yeah. on their musical collaboration I, I, Monolith of Phobos. Totally believe that. Lennon commented quote, Head is like my Bible. Any project or important thought I've ever had was inspired by Head. Huh. Intriguing. I, I can actually, I, I see that. Mm -hmm. I hear that when you listen no, to this well, that's music. that's what I mean. That's yeah. what I mean. By see, I mean yeah. hear. When I, is that what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in this instance, yes. By sea, I mean here. I see with my ears. <laughs> By sea, I mean smell. I wonder what Ash and the Mates of Fate would say about this. I mean, can we get her on the show? Because God knows we need help. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> can we phone a friend? <laughs> Uh, as we have said, this is a special edition. Uh, we're all celebrating on our end here. So as I'm sure you can you can tell, we're having a few drinks. This is not typical of the show, um, but, you know, it's a celebration. And we want everybody uh, to be celebrating, it's a celebration. celebrating with us. <laughs> as Mike and I can notice, I'm sure you can as well, Justin is having the most fun. <laughs> So we're, we're going to shuffle the deck a little bit, whereas normally we have Pat's points for this very special 25th episode. We're going to have a special edition of Justin's points. Justin's points. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's good. I'm going yeah. I'm, I'm to be out of job soon. <laughs> you scab. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so here's what's going to happen. Justin is going to read off his points, his notes that uh, he has written during the viewing of the monkey's head. And Mike and I are then going to take those points and, and, and try to dissect them and have some fun. So, Justin, you down with that? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> take it away, dude. <laughs> All right, have at it. The, the, the microphone is yours. All right. Hopefully you can handle it. <laughs> I, and some of these are, I, I got from the uh, documentary I watched, but uh, Davy Jones was actually an apprentice jockey before uh, becoming mm -hmm. a monkey. Uh, that's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so weird when you, when say, you say that. Before, <laughs> becoming a monkey. <laughs> He was a jockey before becoming a monkey. I instantly started thinking of remember the banana derby, where they just get like the Shetland pump, the Shetland ponies, and they put monkeys on the back, and then monkeys they race around. And you can see the, the, the yes, state fair. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that poor Davy Jones transformed into a monkey. Yeah, it yeah. was so sad. Still doing yeah. banana derbies all over uh, the West Coast. <laughs> You know, I did learn that in this episode, though. I didn't know that he was going to be a jockey oh, yeah, or yeah. apprenticing to be a jockey or whatever the case was. Yeah. It was pretty wild. Uh, Michael Nesmith uh, briefly went by Michael Blessing. So that's the yeah, neat thing. Yeah, I, I saw that. He um, That was his stage name, Blessing. The yeah. Blessing! <laughs> they want you to say <laughs> The Blessing! Um... <laughs> 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 oh, <God>. uh, <laughs> that's Christ Bethany. Is that Rome Claire? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, okay, so Blessing. Where, where the hell did he come up with Blessing? He said he pulled it out of a phone book. Yeah, what did he say? He said he, he just was going through the phone book and he didn't find anything in the A's that he likes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Peter Tork's birthday... Is uh, February thirteenth? Uh, the day he died was actually on the twenty first of February, right around the time of this recording. Rest in peace, to, uh, Peter Tork. Amazing uh, piece of history. Teeter pork. Peter Tork. <laughs> Teeter pork. I don't know. We can roll with it. Um, he played with Stephen Stills in a band called Buffalo Fish, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Michael Dolenz. Uh, when he was uh -huh. 10, he played in a show called Circus Boy. Oh, yeah. 
So that was a show or a movie? I don't remember, but he, I think it was a, a was, movie where he played yeah, Circus he, Boy when he was he 10. He was a child actor. He was like riding around on an, 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 on an elephant or something, I think it was. Okay. I mean, he was like 10 or something like that at the time. Yeah. I think it was a okay. TV show or something. But what a lot of people don't know is he also did the voice of um, the <laughs> moth guy in The Tick, and I'm totally forgetting his name. Oh, shit. Oh, was Arthur, he? yeah. He was the voice of Arthur? Yeah. yeah. No yes. shit. Wow. Yeah, which actually brings me to, to something, I don't know if we mentioned this already, that it, I thought it was interesting that Davy Jones and Mickey Dolenz were, came from an acting background, and Peter Tork and Michael Nesmith came from uh, a Music. musical background yeah. into the acting, so they both kind of right. came from two different places and... Yeah. You know, merged so, together. Which yeah, it's amazing when you really like look into it and consider how difficult it is to to act and or play in a band as a musician mm -hmm. and to be able to do both is pretty astounding. But my question is when they were when the powers that be were building this super group and they decided that they wanted to bring talent together and have them be in a band what do you think drew them towards the two actors of the group? Was it just based on their looks and acting experience? And they were like, ah, yeah, we could probably mold these guys into some kind of musician. Or was there a, a spark that they knew there was the possibility they they would even be able to be a musician? You know well, what I'm I, saying? Like, I know that they all auditioned. Or did they just take a shot in the dark? They all auditioned for the, you know, for the roles, so... I mean, I guess. And do you think that? Do you think that? I would love to know if they like put a guitar in their hand or drums no and idea. said, "Do you have rhythm?" <laughs> well, they they had uh, like Mickey Dolenz was a, a guitarist. Like he already knew how to play guitar, oh, okay. even though he was an actor. Okay. Uh, but I think oh, Davy Jones okay. was uh, d had done some performances, you know, with singing and stuff like that. So, so they had, they they had did some have, musical background. They that had just touches wasn't. of yeah, music. Yeah, there was a there. little bit there. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Tommy Boyce <laughs> and Bobby Hart wrote the music when they started, mm -hmm. um, and then later on they started writing their own stuff. Which now, was who big, are they? Are they supposed? To to, are they like names? Because I don't know them. Honestly, I, I'm not really sure. I saw them like name dropping them several times, and I was like, I Tommy Boyce. How do you spell that? B O Y C E. C E. Tommy Boyce. Okay, here we go. This is cool. It's composer. So yeah. It's estimated that Tommy Boyce's solo compositions and collaborative efforts have produced record sales over and above 85 million. What? Tommy and his partner, Bobby Hart, wrote the theme to Days of Our Lives and Ooh, hits wow. for guys like Andy Williams, Dean Martin, The Animals, and Del Shannon in addition to scores and songs for television and films. They were even instrumental in lowering the voting age to 18. That is unexpected. And That's awesome. And then there's the monkeys. The career of Tommy Boyce began as early as the late 1950s. In those days, before there was color TV, Tommy had established himself as one of the brightest young writers to ever come out of the legendary Brill Building days. I don't know what that is. His first big break came when he wrote Be My Guest for Fats Domino. Hmm. He wrote the song alone, but gave writing credit to the artist, as well as the person who helped him get the song to the artist. According to Caroline Boyce, Tommy said he never regretted sharing the writer's income because it got his proverbial foot in the door. Anyway, oh. so just to scan through some of his work. Well, that's fascinating because I didn't know any of this. Yeah, I it just, is fascinating. The, well, He's the, got, in, the, in the documentary, they mention the, the two guys, and I'm like, they're, the way they said their names was like, you should, you should be familiar with these names, basically. Like, man, he's got 99 soundtrack credits. Hmm. I mean, just scanning through Bandstand, I Dream a Genie. Now, I don't know what he did for Rain any of blood. these. It, yeah, <laughs> it might be like one song or it might be the theme. I'm not sure. But Monkey's got a shit ton of credits. Enter Sandman. Um, Bewitched, Partridge Ch Family. Chicken Hunting. Drive In. <laughs> uh, After Hours, which I feel like. Sadama Go Go. Sid and Nancy, <laughs> I'm not your stepping stone. Did he write that for the uh, what's it called? Isn't that a um, Sid and Nancy movie? 
Yeah, I'm not your stepping stone. Is that the Rolling that, Stones? That's a monkey. That's a monkey song. Oh, that's a monkey's. Mm. Okay. Yeah, well, he wrote that. Perhaps you've heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't know much about them. I would love to use this podcast as a flat of flat flamaga. <laughs> <laughs> a what? As a platform to maybe learn more about the monkeys one of these days. Oh, dude, Sarah and I got like we got like it opened up a whole like because I remember seeing the monkeys when I was a kid at my grandmother's house. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. But I couldn't really remember too much about them. And then we start watching, and then we start watching old episodes, and all of us start coming back. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. And then and then we started, like, listening back not only to the Monkees, but a lot of other music from the 60s that we like that, you know, we don't listen all the time, like mm. the Grassroots, the mm. Hollies, the Zombies, the Birds. Wow. Uh, the Guess Who, which was in the 70s. The Christian Zombie Mark Birds. and the Mysterious. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> the Kinks, Moody Blue, you know, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, to name a few that I just happen to have written down in front of me. Uh, oh. Look, so I, I will say this about the Tommy Boyce thing, though, is just scanning through his works, and a lot of it is um, soundtrack credits, so I feel like it's not that he wrote, and again, this is just my perception just given this five minutes, but I feel like it. he didn't write a ton of... But what he did write was insanely impactful and is, is still used to this day. Yeah. So, yeah, for example, great. I see a uh, theme from the monkeys was used in a Minions movie that's coming out. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, come a little bit closer. Days of Our Lives theme is uh, obviously constantly still used. And then there's uh, yeah. The Queen's Gambit, which is on Netflix. There's He's got a writing uh, soundtrack credit in that. So, obviously, oh, they used wow. one of his tunes. So, his stuff is still being used actively. Which is that's great, pretty cool. So anyway, uh, what else do you have, Justin? What's the uh, other? Whoa, what was the other guy? Oh fuck him! <laughs> yeah, dude, what the fuck? Why you gonna bring that guy into it all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah what guy. was his name? Let me look him up. <laughs> uh, so Tommy Boyce died in 1994, at the age of 55. Ooh, that's ouch! Awful. Yeah. Uh, what's the other guy's name, Justin? Uh the other guy is Bobby Hart. Who plays for the Cincinnati Bengals? Yeah, it looks to me like he has. That's a different Bobby oh, Hart, by the sa- way. Yeah, he's got 115 soundtrack credits. Jeez, but a lot of them are the same. Oh, uh, so they were like so a writing he team. He was credited on the Queen's Gambit, Days of Our Lives, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. So it seems like a lot of the songs they wrote together. Mm-hmm. Um, but let me just they're, do this. They're the Siegfried and Roy of pop music. Yeah. It's estimated that Bobby Hart's solo compositions and collaborative efforts have produced record sales over and above 85 million, which is the same opening sentence as Tommy Boyce. That's the other guy, yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it, it seems like they did their best work together, and then mm-hmm. obviously Bobby Hart did a little bit more because he's got a few more credits. Well, that's very interesting, and I've never heard of either one. Yeah, pretty neat. See, but that just goes to show... Okay, so let's look at it like this. We're spending all this time talking about the monkeys and how they dealt with this issue of being put in a box and controlled and handed a guitar and a script and songs and told to sing this and say that. Hmm. And we have felt empathy for them because they had to deal with a lot of shit. Now, whether it be from the people who say, oh, you're not writing your own music, or whether it be from musicians who are giving them grief because, you know, they don't understand the plight of having to write your own songs, whatever. Look at it now from the flip side, from heart and voice. These are the guys actually writing the fucking music, and we just learned their names. Yeah. 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 (laughs) You know? Like, it could be worse. And you were just going to gloss over it until I told you to dig deeper. Yeah, you know what? I was. <laughs> You're welcome. This is also, though, to be fair, not quite exactly directly in our wheelhouse. So True, true, true. So, you know, like, when has... I've known you guys for a long time, and I don't ever remember having a conversation about the monkeys. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true. Until now. Yeah. yeah. But we will in the future well, now. yeah, because, like, that's what we've already... Thanks s- to Ash and the Mates of Fate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. It's true. Is that what number is that? That's like I, at least number five. At yeah. least, yeah, give or um, take. But no, that's that's you know, like we were saying, uh, we've we all saw the monkeys when we were a kid, and then I kind of I think it just kind of got buried in the past for all of us. So yeah. it, it's cool that we got to revisit that and kind of rejuvenate that interest. 
Mm-hmm. In- interest. Agreed. Not interest. I don't know what that yeah. is. That's Well, I think that's what they apply to a loan. Oh. <laughs> that's right? what that is. Uh, anything else, Justin? Yeah, I got a few more things. Okay. I'm telling you, I got some stuff on here. We don't have to talk about everything. Um, mm. uh, Logan Ramsey played the cop, like the motorcycle cop guy. And I was uh. like, where do I know this guy from? And it was like really bugging me. I was like, I know I've seen him before. And when I looked him up, he's in Scrooged, which we watch every year. Oh. He plays like one of the guys in the shelter. Oh, oh shit. wow. Okay. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, I can envision him. He's the... He's the friend of the dude that froze. Yeah, Michael Pollard, mm-hmm. or Herman. Yeah. Hmm. These are my points. I'm getting through them. Uh, there's a whole huge thing about them being kind of like miscast as like a fake band. Mm-hmm. But like they kind of were manufactured and people wrote their songs. But they were like half of them were already uh, musicians to begin with. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. ones who weren't worked hard to become musicians. Right. So they were like. They became a legit band. Yeah, they became a legit band that were supposed to be from a TV show. So imagine nowadays watching a TV show of a the band, but the actual people learn their instrument. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, so so let me let me ask a question. That these guys then they must have been uh, extra passionate about this project that they all recognized they had something special to the point. Instead of them just throwing their hands up and saying, you know what, F it, you know, I'm collecting a paycheck, whatever happens, happens, just let them shit out whatever they got to shit out. I'll go up there like a, a monkey and just do what I got to <laughs> do. Because they were the I monkeys. Mean, no, yeah, yeah, no pun was intended. But instead, they said, look, we have this situation, we're learning, we're improving, we can make this better. Is that kind of how it unfolded? Where they embraced what they had to the point where they took it and ran a level it. or two above I where it could have been? I think there's a lot of factors in play. I think one with the monkeys, I think the creators of the monkeys didn't realize what exactly what, they what were they creating. Had. Yeah. What they had. And you had mm-hmm. a group of talented people with a really good sense of humor that really started working off each other. And like when in our history have we had some like a band as like um, the Beatles uh, kind of referred to them like as the, they were like, no, they're not like the, the Beatles. They're like Monty Python, which they kind of mm. were. They were a comedy group. Right. Mm. And then people who didn't take them seriously musically, it was kind of unfair because um, they were a comedy group doing music so well that they got thrown into the rock and roll pantheon. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And people were like, oh, they don't play their own instruments. And they get, they gave them so much shit because they weren't on the same level as these other bands. Mm-hmm. But they were yeah. not a band. They were a comedy group that made this band with yeah. amazing pop songs. Like To play off of that, Justin, uh, another shining example of that, Spinal Tap. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's actually a really good example. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. Spinal Tap's kind of the same situation where they were like, you know, they're all comedians, but they are also talented musicians who made... Yeah, and their songs are fun. Yeah, yeah good. well, their songs are much more uh, silly. Yeah, they're more silly, yeah. So, so I guess you could say that the band is a MacGuffin. Yes. <laughs> yeah, to the comedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though it's a little more than a MacGuffin, because to learn a guitar yeah. or a bass or drums yeah, yeah. is not really th- that easy. No, I think the strength is but. though the characters, the, the the actors that they had, like all four of these guys were like funny. They're all strong they, on their own. Yes, and honestly, when I started watching a lot of this monkey stuff, a lot of it reminded me of like the stuff that you and Mike used to do, like the videos, the home videos and stuff. Yeah, where it was just these fun. Just like these little, like, one-off little... Yeah, one-off things. Yep. Just the hilarity and just, the, like, the nonsense, but, like, a lot of heart and stuff put into it. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is important that we mention that. Just based on all the yeah. stuff we... Experiences we talk about, it, the stuff we do. The fact that this reminded me of the stuff that you guys did before I met you is huge to me. Because I love yeah. this movie. Oh. And, and your guys' stuff used to make me laugh. Which we should start posting some of that. Um, Maybe we should. I'll be too busy trying to edit this episode. Oh, you're this you're going to be edit, <laughs> editing this for the next 3 weeks. This is a train wreck. Listen, I I will tell you this though. Those were some of the most influential early creativity days of my lifetime. They oh, helped for mold sure. who I became. And that sure, is no absolutely. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sarah and I still quote those, by oh, the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What what are some of the quotes you use? 
I know sometimes when we're playing card games and stuff, occasionally I'll say, you raised the card? <laughs> like, yeah. You raised the card. Or, uh, <laughs> the, the, one, the one that, oddly enough, comes up the most is, uh, there are many levels of entombment. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. We've only begun the first of many stages yeah. of, of yeah. entombment. Entombment yeah. is a very complicated process. Uh, we it's are a only very in long first and of, strenuous yeah, process. A, a very long and strenuous process. We are only in the first of but many stages of entombment. Yeah, we, well, we don't quote them correctly, but, but that, wasn't, yeah, that wasn't even me and you, Pat. That was, no, that, that, was, that was Rob. That was Rob. Yeah. yeah that was Rob ad-libbing like a, like well, a mofo. No, Ro Rob said, I thought we had entombed them. Oh, And, yeah. and then I was the one that responded oh, with the you responded. entombment is a long and strenuous process. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it, it's... Uh. It's a shame he didn't try his hand at acting instead of directing. Maybe uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> it would have turned out a little better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he should have acted in wax work. Totally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, proceed, Justin. And it felt it felt like someone made a show off of someone making these fun one-off things. Like everything was rooted in fun. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. I think so. And, and I think it was lost on people. You know what I mean? It, because it was just it was fun. It wasn't. It didn't meet people's expectations, but it was better than, I think, what people's expectations were. Like, mm -hmm. there's songs that, like, everyone is, like, our generation knows that are, like, pop songs, but it was made from a, a manufactured TV band. Mm -hmm. And, but they, they were a really good comedic TV band that made really good pop songs, which arguably mm -hmm. were better than any other pop songs of that era. And I hate to keep mm -hmm. comparing them, but... So don't that whole that whole, <laughs> no, the, whole Monty, the whole Monty Python comparison in that they're they're different. However, where they're the where they're similar is where it's like short bursts of sketches that kind of yeah. weave in and out of each other. Yeah, no, I'm with you. But I tell you where they're extra similar. There is one monkey that's English. Well, yeah, and there is one Python. Who's American? Who's American. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, 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 that's that's true. All right, that's all I got. I'm gonna bow out now and play my my exit song like I'm a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, so this is the point in the show where I'm gonna start playing the Brutus the Barber Beefcake theme and just exit stage left. <laughs> this this should be good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, for any late add-ons to the show here, if you didn't catch it from the very beginning, uh, Ash was the individual who selected the film that ended up winning the contest that w led to our 25th episode, which you are listening to, and we are contractually obligated to mention said winner five times, if not more, throughout the episode. Also, so I Ash know personally is a huge fan of cheese. So, <laughs> like cheese as in actual food cheese, or yeah, cheese as in cheese. like yeah. cheesy cheese as in what we're producing right <laughs> now. No, no, she does not like this. What we're doing, she likes <laughs> actual food cheese. Um, oh. So, if you if you want to make a donation, um, send it to us. We'll pass the cheese on to Ash. I like cheese. A cheese also, donation. I can't I can't promise that the cheese will make its way to her because I also love cheese. Breaking, Breaking news. news. We interrupt this program regarding Mike's appreciation for cheese to bring you breaking news from the Ash FM News Desk. It is being reported that the MacGuffin Guild has a special treat for the Guild members as part of this 25th episode extravaganza. A MacGuffin first, our very first guest. Joining us to discuss the monkey's head is our longtime friend, and owner of the whimsical handmade business Spider Bite Boutique, as well as wife of our fellow MacGuffin, Justin. We have Sarah Evans. Sarah, welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there it is. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us on this very special 25th episode of the MacGuffin Guild to discuss the monkey's head. I've always appreciated the way you've broken films down, and I cannot wait to hear what you have to say about this one, which at face value seems like a goofy flick. However, you've sort of opened my eyes to the sadness that this film also carries too, and I would love for you to explain that to us and to the MacGuffin Guild listeners. There was just like kind of a sadness about watching it because it wasn't, it wasn't the humor of the show, like the madcap humor. It was like, I had read something about them saying that maybe they thought that uh, Jack Nicholson and I forget who's the... Raffleson. I think it's Raffleson. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's mm -hmm. it. Like that that 
that maybe like the whole idea was that they were just done with the monkeys. Like it's a project he's tied to because he came up with it. He just wanted to do harder, harsher films Mm -hmm. and that this was just a, a potential like maybe they were just using it to do some film experimentation. Mm. I think maybe Peter Tork mentioned something about that. And uh, when I was watching it before I read that, that's how I felt. It felt like the whole idea behind the whole movie was that it was kind of making fun of the fact that they were like trapped, you know, they kept getting stuck in this box. And Mm. it it kept playing on like the things that would happen to them in the show, but then spin it in like this sad, tragic way. Mm-hmm. And then, but then it had this extra layer, if you think about it, that if Jack Nicholson and... Raffleson. Yeah, Raffleson. If they were then making this film as like, just, again, exploiting them, like this extra level. So the whole idea is about making fun of the idea of them being like exploited in the show. Mm-hmm. But then mm-hmm. the film itself is actually exploiting them. That's just like this mm-hmm. extra level of like tragedy. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that's what it was, but I would not be that surprised because it, it had little of the heart in there. And I even read something about at one point, uh, I guess Jack Nicholson ended up with like a music credit because Nesmith mm-hmm. was working on the music and then he was just like, I'm just done. And then mm-hmm. Nicholson came in and worked on it. It just sounded like they were exhausted by it. And it didn't yeah. feel like Davy Jones in the um, in the documentary was talking about the same thing that it just it wasn't it wasn't the monkeys, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. that what? it wasn't the right vehicle. He's like, we should have made Ghostbusters is what he said, Oof. like something funny, yeah. something light and like comedic of this group of guys doing this thing. But. I don't know, it's just funny how much of the show, I mean, the movie ended up being about them being isolated almost from each other, when the show is all about them being together. Mm -hmm. And then, but then they just kept getting trapped together. I don't know. There was just this overarching sense of, like, tragedy to it. And then the extra level of if they were exploiting them with the movie, just to be able to get the funding to have a movie where they could experiment and also kill this project that he was done with, yeah. you know, that's just like even because it did. It killed the monkeys. It, it like, I mean, there it, was it, other factors. It wasn't just the movie, mm-hmm. but it just like, I don't know. It's heartbreaking in a lot of ways because I grew up with them. I loved them. Same. Yeah. A huge crush. Michael Nesmith. When I was little, okay. I don't know why but I did. Okay. And, uh, no, Sarah, that was uh, something we we brought up earlier. That uh, on the first day of filming, three of the four monkeys walked off set. Yeah, yeah, went on strike. Okay, so yeah, okay, yeah. So they they were not happy either. No, no. It is insanely tragic. It is, especially yeah. when you present it like that. Yeah. You know, it definitely it, it does kind of rip your heart and out. Prior to that, they were having so much fun with it, yeah. you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and they got a hard time from everybody else. Like the whole thing about ripping on them for not being the musicians in the studio, like mm-hmm. when at that time studio, you know, you always had studio musicians. Oh, yeah. Doing that was a huge records. thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like that was that was the standard practice back in the day. I mean, it was changing at that time. But that's how like, it was it's, done. But that's yeah. how it was done in the past. And and they didn't really have much control. Like, I can't imagine being a musician like Michael Nesmith was and, and Peter Tork were. And then yeah. obviously Mickey and, and um, Davey were actors, but they, you know, had musical talents. But I right. can't imagine being a musician and then being like, well, yeah, you're not allowed to do all this. And then everyone's like, see, you're fake. You're fake. You're fake. Mm, yeah. yeah. You know, when you know you're not, but you're, you're doing a job. You right. know? I mean, who yeah. thought the monkey show was real? Like, come on. You think they really lived in that little well, apartment? Don't, don't tell Mike. Do me a favor. Don't shatter this for Mike, please. Yeah. But that's no, it. Well, yeah. and that's the funny thing. Like, uh, sir, you'll hear this when you hear the episode, but I'm going to repeat it anyway now, so you'll hear it now. Wow, I'm an idiot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's, Is that your point? No. One thing I had mentioned <laughs> earlier. <point>. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One thing I mentioned earlier was that as a kid watching the the show, which I was a I was a big fan of, I barely remember anything. And and I, I mentioned also that I'm sure most of it went over my head. I was too young to understand a lot of yeah, the, same same the, the ins and outs of the jokes and stuff. But anyway, uh, as a kid, I didn't know that they were a real band. I just thought it was a TV show. 
Yeah. I was unaware. I, mean, I knew there were songs, but well, I didn't. It didn't. I didn't I thought, do the connection. Yeah. So I thought the songs were just within the show. Like I didn't know yeah. that it was more than that until I was a little older. You know, and yeah. I was like, oh shit! Like, oh, they were actually they actually put songs out and they were on the radio and stuff. Wow, that's yeah. that's interesting. Like, I had no idea. Well, well, even back then, like y- you think back to like Elvis days and all. You know, I don't know about Elvis specifically, but back in the fifties and the sixties, like. You had songwriters and then you had performers. Yes. Mm. Yep. Well, you, you know? still have and that. You still do. You still have that. Yeah. But like, there was a big push towards the end of the '60s into the early '70s that there were these bands and they did all the they did all the grunt work. They did the yeah. music. You know, yeah. they they wrote everything. They they made the music. They did the lyrics. They did the singing. You know, they did the studio work. Yeah. And like, I guess that's something that people didn't really know about. Like, I guess you didn't really know what was going on in the studios prior to that. So then when people knew that that was happening, anybody who wasn't doing that, even though that was the standard practice, yeah. was, like, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know? No, that makes yeah. sense. And now it's, yeah. like, sw- it has, well, not not recently, recently, but more recently, it has kind of switched back the other way where, you know, you have other people writing the songs and mm-hmm. these people are just yeah. singing them. I- you know, I mean, I think that never really went away from no, pop music, but no, for mm-hmm. sure. But I think it's kind of, it's becoming more prevalent a, a, again. Yeah. Well, and, and more well known, probably. Yeah, too. true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. It really means a lot, and I just thought this was a great opportunity because, look, this is kind of a celebration. The fact <laughs> we've put out twenty-five episodes now of this thing. Yeah. And you're our special guest. Pretty, pretty I've, cool. I've listened. I'm the super fan. I've listened to everyone. That's All awesome. Right, Sarah, thank you yeah. so thank much. You. Thank you, yeah. Sarah. I was there it great. Is. Done. All right. So here is what I would like to do at this point. I think even though it's been quite the extravaganza, <laughs> this uh, this very mighty 25th episode of ours, uh, which, by the way, thank you, everybody, for joining us on this this ride, not only through this episode, but through the course of the 24 episodes leading up to it we do appreciate it uh and i want to say real quick and thank you to everyone who submitted to our contest yes that means a lot it does thank you thank you to our contest winner ash yes ash that might be six or seven at this point Uh, but i will say this and i think we've touched on it before but i want to say one more time that everybody that submitted an idea I want you to realize that even though you may not have won this contest, it's still going to directly impact the course that this podcast follows. Because I guarantee yes. you that some of the films that were submitted, if not all of them over time, will I think quite ma- a few make their way onto this show. So Yes. Yeah. Uh, and and I think when we do those we should definitely uh give a little shout oh, out yes. to yeah, shout to outs, the people who submitted shout them. Shout-outs are yeah. coming. So, yeah. for sure, when you see your film ultimately pop up, check it out because you will get a shout-out, for sure. Yep. But let's do this. We are going to do ratings because that's what we typically do around this point. So, Justin, are you prepared to give your rating? Pat, I am not. <laughs> 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 so do you want to pass the ball to someone else? Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, let's go to Mike first. Oh, cool. Right. Thanks, asshole. Mike, <laughs> you, no, I'm just kidding. You can, I'm uh, kidding. Mike, uh, <laughs> what do you say about the monkey's head? I have complex feelings about this movie because I did enjoy seeing it. I'm glad I saw it. It's not really my type of movie and it kind of and Sarah talked about this how it made you feel kind of sad I think Justin also said that you feel a little sad with this movie because it's not the same fun irreverent humor as the show it's a lot darker Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways so it kind of kind of hurt me (laughs) you know what I mean like seeing that Mm -hmm. um so (sighs) I will probably watch this film again at some point, not anytime soon, mm-hmm. but maybe, you know, down the road a little bit, I'd like to give it another, give it another view. But as it stands right now, I, I, I don't feel highly about this film. Mm-hmm. And just, just, and just knowing that the, the, the members of the monkeys themselves were not really all that ecstatic about it, weren't really fully on board with it, mm-hmm. uh, kind of adds to that feeling. Mm-hmm it did make me think about things like it it had a little bit deeper meaning behind it 
mm-hmm. than you know the show did. The show was like I said more ir- irreverent, and this was a little more dark and had some themes and subject. Um, so I'm gonna give it a five point three. Okay, I think that's very fair. I think it's too high though. <laughs> Uh, really? <laughs> oh my God! No, listen, listen. I'm just, I'm I'm somewhat playing, but I I feel I feel kind of the same way because you know much like you guys as well. Like you know that that stuff was ingrained in me in my youth, and yeah. the monkeys were like a, a staple in that era of my life. And but as with every film we've ever talked about on this podcast. The way I feel about it at the beginning and the way I feel about it after I get some context and perspective from you guys oh, yeah. and we discuss and we break down and we talk about it sometimes, mostly, I mean, there's a few exceptions, but mostly my opinion will sway, even if it's just a notch or two. Sure. And I feel that my opinion did sway a little bit, but I I feel... Even though I have a greater appreciation for this film, I don't think that appreciation is for the film itself. I think it's more for the guys. I think that's who I yes. empathize with. And I totally agree with you, yeah. And I think Sarah, you know, she kind of hit the nail on the head. And again, Justin did as well, uh, probably via Sarah. <laughs> 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 but the the fact that this is it's a tragedy and not only yeah. is it a tragedy they were like court jesters that were just put on full blast and exploited to the yeah the, the nth degree to the very last droplet of what they had to give and then yeah. just thrown to the, the yeah the that side. was it it's it's kind of devastating um and again this is all you know through what we've learned over time i know a lot can change and there's hearsay and there every side has three stories as they say or whatever yeah. whatever that saying is um hindsight is 2020 yeah all that stuff but based on what i've gathered and what we feel it definitely feels like a bit of a tragedy and you know i think because of that I, look here's the deal this film i'm never gonna I'm never going to like just get home from work one Friday and be like, you know what? Let me put the monkey's head in because I just feel like that's a good vibe. You know what I could see this film being? I think this film would be a great backdrop for like a, a gathering of friends. Like it's just yeah. on in the background. You're all drinking, getting crazy. You just want some crazy visuals, some nice music. It's a nice vibe of those yeah, yeah. two things. I totally, yeah, but it's, absolutely. For me, it's not a sit down, let me put this on, get my slippers on, and watch fucking monkeys movie. Like, I just don't see that happening. Um, so there's a value in it for sure. Not that it's all about, you know, pleasing me, but I don't see this film becoming a part of my life like that. And I think because no. of that, I can't really rate it that high. I don't really, f- I don't feel that much for it. Um I do appreciate what the monkeys brought and their show I thought was top notch. Um, yeah, but this, I have to separate the two. So yeah. Mike, what did you say? Six, three, no, five, three, five, three, five point five point three. You know what? I'll, I'll go with a, I don't, I don't even think it's a five. I'll give it like a four, eight. I'm going to okay. go with 4.8 on this one. Okay. So Justin, what do you think? Seven. Point two. I don't know. Point two. It's hard. Okay. Yeah. I I because I it was fun. I enjoyed watching it. It led me to other things, but in and of itself, it was like, or like I didn't. I had to. I didn't enjoy it as much watching it as I think I would. Like as I was watching, I'm like, I'm gonna enjoy watching this more the second time because it was kind of mm-hmm. all over the place, which I like, but it didn't make it great. So yeah, that's my rating. Huh. Yeah, okay. so j- let me ask a question, though, Justin. The 7.2, that doesn't happen to be the uh, the ABV of the beer you're drinking, is it? <sighs> the, uh, the ABV is like a 7.9, so I, just, I always try and go below what the ABV okay. I'm drinking, so... 
All right. Well, so look. oh, go on. What's Mike, our I'm average? Sorry. What's our average? And by the way, I want to point out, I don't. You never said our average for Slapshot, our previous episode. We never got the average. Oh, we didn't. Well, shit. No. You just call me out in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. So our average score between the three of us for the monkey's head Nine. is five point seven six. You know. That sounds pretty fair for this movie. Yeah, even though I'm a little surprised, like, you saw the Rotten Tomatoes all, like, uh, above 70s. Yeah. Um, I'm not there. I'm not there with this I guess, film. I guess with the context, you know, mm-hmm. with the extra added context, the behind-the-scenes stuff, it kind of yeah. tarnishes it a little bit. Mm-hmm. For us, I mean, it may, maybe that isn't the case for everyone. Yeah. That should be about it, fellas, right? Any final thoughts before we shut it down? I just want to give one last shout out to Mates of Fate, uh, uh, yes. Ash and Mike, uh, a.k.a. Dr. Spaghetti. Mates of Fate. Check it out. Instagram. Ash, I hope you enjoy your prizes. And everybody, she thank won't. you for listening. <laughs> she absolutely <laughs> won't. I thank, I thank everybody for listening. I especially thank anybody who happens to be a first-time listener who happen to unfortunately choose this episode <laughs> and they think that we're just a bunch of fucking nutcases you know yeah. ranting and raving about a- well, like ash look, from the evil dead or something they don't know what's going on we uh we definitely let loose on this one mm-hmm. but again it's, it's a celebration it is a celebration 25th episode we're entitled and you know what effective next week when we get to 26 i'm gonna start counting down when we get to 50 and we can do this oh, all over hell again yeah we'll do it again any, unless you guys have any final thoughts, I say we lock her down. And, no, and I we, think, and we, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's lock her down. And we put this episode in the box with the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike, got yeah, anything? I don't think we're ever going to break out of this one. No. Justin, you good? Any final thoughts? No. <laughs> All right, well, Justin, Mike, I love you guys. Uh, I'm thrilled to be on this adventure with you, and uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to the MacGuffin Guild. It means a lot that you're a part of this. Thanks for sticking with us for 25 episodes. 25 years. (laughs) 25th anniversary. (laughs) No, 25 (laughs) episodes. It's been been a great ride, and we appreciate all of you being a part of this. And keep on coming around. So we're just getting started. Means a lot. It does mean a lot to all of us, mm-hmm. for sure. Especially Mike. Yeah, I have nothing else in life. <laughs> 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 all right, Justin, Mike, thank you so much, and we will see you guys next week back here on the MacGuffin Guild. All right, guys, everybody. Yeah, I'm gonna say ya. That's why people say. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Um, he said, yeah, I'm going to see you. Now it's I'm going to see you. All right. I think it's time to shut it down. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you all next time. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Peace. Goodbye. Peace out. You better than this. Sir, you'll hear this when you hear the episode, but I'm going to repeat it anyway now, so you'll hear it now. Wow, I'm an idiot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's Is that a- your point? No. <laughs> End of point. Yeah. <laughs>